Volume is not how loud you have your iPod, iPad, TV, or whatever device you're using. In math, when we talk about volume, what are we talking about? Anybody going once more twice, Tyler? How much space on the top? Yeah, how much space? And it's different than area because area is a flat surface, it's like a piece of paper. Volume is three dimensional. And volume is found in what? What units of measurement do we use for volume? Parker? Inches. Inches what though? There you go. It's cubes. We use cubes for volume. Now it depends on, you can cube anything. You know, you could have a cubic inch which is about this big, one inch cubed. And remember, it's the label that's cubed, not the one. Okay. And the reason for that, we just talked about yesterday, a one inch cube, well, let's go with a foot cubed. A foot cubed. Here is my foot cubed. Okay. This is one foot by one foot by one foot. Okay, if I am looking for volume, let's just write this down real quick here. Volume is length times width times height. I should probably emphasize that that is volume of a rectangular prism. And like we learned yesterday, if I do my length times width times height, if I take one foot, multiply it by one foot, and multiply it by one foot, one times one times one is one, foot times foot times foot is foot cubed. There's three of them getting multiplied together. One foot cubed. That's a cubic foot. Is a foot by a foot by a foot. If I asked you, well, nah, yes. if you were guessing how many cubic inches would fit into a cubic foot, any guesses, partner? Because if you think about what a cubic foot is, a cubic foot is 12 inches by 12 inches by 12 inches. So in order to find how many cubic inches are in a cubic foot, you'd have to multiply 12 times 12, which maybe you know it is 144, and then multiply that by 12 one more time. And that's what, 288 and 144, 8, 2, 2. I get one thousand. Oh, Dad did something. I'm hoping. Yeah, I could have done it. No, I probably did it. Into this cube. Uh, you know, we could talk cubic centimeters. That's pretty small. What things do we measure in cubes? There's not a lot, but we do some. Parker. Yeah, but usually you don't go to the store and say I want a 35 cubic centimeter box or whatever. I mean, you do, you and you can, but I'm just saying it's not it's not something you run across every day. Carter, right? Buildings. Believe it or not, buildings usually are measured in square feet. They don't take into account the height because. It's pretty much assumed when you go to a building that the height of the ceiling is big enough for you to walk in. So they don't really go by cubic feet. The only time you would need cubic feet for buildings is the guys that have to figure out how big of a furnace or an air conditioner to heat or cool it. Because you have to heat a space, not just a floor. See, when you walk into a room, you just walk on the floor, really. And you assume that the ceiling is going to be eight or nine feet tall. 
But, you know, if you look at our classroom compared to our gym, if our gym only had a ceiling on it the height of this, you would, you'd only have to heat that much room, but in the gym you have to heat all that air. So when they talk about heating, they talk about cubic feet of air that you need to heat, so you need that for that. So not so much in buildings do we talk cubic feet. Somebody else? Where else would you need to know cubic something? It doesn't come up a whole lot. And most of you, unless you go into a building career, you probably want to see this Carter W. Um, like um, how many feet the cubic feet is your building? Right. How many cubic feet your house is on? No, no, we don't do that with land area either because you go forever now and you get as many cubic feet as you want out of it. You could own a piece of land that is one foot by one foot and just dig straight down and have as many cubic feet as you want as long as you didn't like, step on somebody else's. Once you step in that square there. Here's a couple places. Uh, when they build roads, when you put a sidewalk in, when you go to the when you go to the concrete place or the cement factory, they will ask you. And here's a little jargon for you. They'll ask you how many yards you want. But when they ask you, when you tell them how many yards you want, you're telling them how many cubic yards you want. And their little cement trucks carry so many cubic yards. And you have to be able to figure out because, well, you know, how big is a sidewalk? Anybody? Probably. They're like, what, four, maybe four feet wide? maybe four feet this way, but they're certainly not a foot deep, so they're only maybe like four or six inches thick. So they have to know how much concrete it's going to take to fill in this sidewalk and all the rest of the sidewalks they got. Why, Evelyn, you can go ask your dad, because I'm sure he does over the park district and stuff. They sometimes go, oh, they're stopping cute. Yeah. If you need some sand to fill up your sandbox, when you go to Menards on the bag, on the bag, it'll tell you how many cubic feet or cubic yards is, are in that bag, and there's not very many. A cubic sand, a cubic foot of sand. If you had to guess how much it would weigh, anybody? A lot. No, a lot. Pounds? Oh, I bet it's a cubic foot. I don't know. You'd have to. I of should. Sand? I should Google it. It's gonna. Be, it's gonna be much. It's gonna be much more than twenty pounds. I don't know if it's a hundred pounds. It could, if I were guessing, a cubic foot of sand, I would guess is. 50 or 60 pounds, maybe? Called the glyphs. Those are 50. That's 50. How much? How much? Easy. Does a cubic foot of sand weigh? Look at somebody else has asked that question already. Oh, it is. It's 100 pounds. That's it. Wow. I don't do that. Can you believe that? And how big is a cubic foot? Well, it's the size of that square on the floor, a foot tall. It's only claim that's this big. Sand is pretty dense and heavy. Yeah, it's yummy. No, it wouldn't be. Uh, you should ask how much a cubic foot of water weighs. Probably a lot. More or less than sand, do you think? Less. Less. More. Less. Less. I'm guessing it's less because a five gallon pail certainly isn't a hundred. That's probably. Well, how many gallons are in a cubic foot? How much does a gallon of water weigh? Remember this: a pint a pound the world around. So, if a pint is a pound, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. A gallon of water weighs about eight pounds. I'm gonna guess a cubic foot of water is maybe fifty pounds. Anyway, back to what we're talking about here. So you are going to be asked to find volume of rectangular prisms. Let's say this is a problem that appears in the unfair book. 8 inches, 12 inches, and 20 inches. If that's the problem and it asks you for volume, yes, you need to sketch it out. So you'll draw that out. You will also write the formula for volume, which is length times width times height, and then you just fill in the blanks. And it doesn't matter really. In rectangular prisms, it doesn't matter what you call the length or the width or the height. They're just all three getting multiplied together. So 20 times 12 times 8. You know, 8 times 12 is what, 96? And 96 times 20 is what? 109, 192, 1920, I believe. 
pinches and make sure you label it. It has to be cubic inches because that's what volume is. 1,920 inches is much more different, much differenter, way different than 1,920 inches. 96 times 20. Volume is really pretty easy compared to most things you do in math. Perfect. All right, for tomorrow. Looks like we are.